Athens first. Uh, really good football game played by our players. Really, really proud of our team. Really proud of how hard they played, uh, how they stuck together. We went out with the first drive on offense. wasn't wasn't great focus, but after that, um, I thought we focused on our jobs. We stuck together. We stayed in our lane and uh, played really well in all phases of the game. Obviously, late in the game, we were able to play a lot of players, which is a positive. And um, we took care of the football. We didn't have any turnovers, which was good. And uh, really excited that our players are sitting here five and three. And uh, a week ago, yesterday, or you could go tomorrow, we went there and had a team meeting and said it's time to get going. And we wouldn't be sitting here tonight at 7.34 and be 5-3. and three. And really, really proud of our football team and our players and really everybody in our building for being 5-3 and three and winning tonight. And that was a great win. Happy for our team. You can ask these guys some questions. Can see him over here, 265 uh, passing yards, uh, career high for you. Uh, something today you guys were able to stretch the secondary. What was the focus? Uh, what was the execution this afternoon? Um, you know, I think uh, we had a really good week of practice this week. Everybody was locked in. Like Coach Cannon said, trying to get to five and three. Um, and then, you know, we just went out and had fun and had fun today. You know, the offensive line did a great job blocking. You know, I had a bunch of time back there and the receivers were out there making plays and I mean, it was a lot of fun today. Yeah, Javon, what does it feel like to score four TDs? You've had four combined uh, through your career and you just found the end zone in all sorts of ways. Uh, what was working for you and uh, can you, did you ever do that in high school? I don't know. And a couple of times, but I was just blessed to get the opportunity to come out. You know, my whole line was doing a great job blocking, and I just did my job. I hit the hole, and like I said, the line did a great job today, and they just set me up to make plays. Uh, how, how much did the running game and the way the guys were running at the beginning of the game help you sort of have, have time to throw it, that they had to sort of play back on their heels a little bit to, to, you know, after that first series? And, you know, like Javon just said, the offensive line did, did a great job today. The backs were hitting the hole, making big plays. I think, you know, we all feed off of each other. You know, like Coach Cannon said like a million times, you know, we can beat you in a multitude of ways. And, you know, if one thing's working, we're going to keep going with it. And if another thing's working, go with that. And, you know, we were just clicking today, so it was a lot of fun. Quick scene. Uh, you had some receivers go out and get the ball today. Are you having a growing relationship with your group of receivers? For sure. You know, I got a lot of trust in those dudes. And, you know, I think today proved that they can go out there and, you know, make plays. And they were making them today. Um, yeah. You guys right on that? Yeah, for Javon, how, how much does it help your position group when Kasim is going out there having having the day he had today? Uh, it just opens up the running game. You know, when Kasim's throwing the ball and the receivers are catching it, it just makes the running back job a lot easier. It opens up the run game a little bit. And, you know, we just come out there and drive job. And then we help Kasim out. So it just goes back and forth. said, uh, focus on getting to five and three, um, do everything in our power throughout the week and on game day to make sure that the goal was accomplished. And I think we did that throughout this week. Another thing is just focus on us, you know, focus on the team, be good for each other. It starts in practice and Coach Canada always stresses that. It's kind of one of the best, you know, speech. He gives the best speeches I've kind of heard before, but he always stresses, <laughs> he always stresses, just be there for each other and just go out and play for each other and the results will be there. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers.
Coach, uh, you know, every Tuesday we talk about the uh, lack of the running game and how strong it is and how you need to uh, maybe fortify the passing game. Was that a conscious effort or was, did you take what you got? I mean, it just Kasim, career high, passing yards, uh, tried it a lot. No, I mean, obviously we want to we wanna be able to ever, use every phase of the offense, but all we care about is winning. So, you know, they had a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage at times. So when they did that, we wanted to throw it. And there were times they played cover two, which obviously Coach Smith's, you know, kind of a staple, and then we ran the ball. So it was it was a balanced it was a balanced night because you take what they give you, and uh, we've got players who can do that. We just have to execute. We have to execute, and not stop ourselves, which at times we've done. So obviously, um, our players played really well tonight. You're right, Coach. Coach, defensively in the first half, they had uh, three trips to the red zone. You guys, instead of uh, allowing touchdowns, you, you were able to get field goals. How huge was that uh, for you guys moving forward, especially uh, after last week? It was great. Obviously, I think our defense, you know, was, we, we, got some, we gave them some field position at times with, with some different situations there. And to hold them, uh, as you mentioned, all field goals and give you, you know, touchdowns versus field goals, you'll take touchdowns. They'll take that all day long. So our defense did a good job with that. We knew Illinois, you know, on offense, I think they're doing some really, really good things. I think they are, you know, they've got some quarterbacks, you know, with the run and the pass that they, that they utilize. Uh, we knew it was going to be a challenge. I mean, they're gaining yards on a lot of people. So it wasn't surprising to us that it was going to be a challenge, but it was a great job by our defense uh, of keeping them out of the end zone. Trent, how you, Pat? Coach, uh, a week after, you know, not scoring any points at Iowa to, to come in, but over 700 yards of offense or the most points a program ever has in a Big Ten game. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not, that it's the most points in a Big Ten performance. But, um, you know, how does that feel to be a part of that? But also, what was the message to the team? this week to kind of get that turned around and what's the message moving forward to keep it going? The message was we played a good defense. We didn't play as well as we could have played. I didn't coach good at all. So we were going to rally. We were going to stick together. We were going to do our jobs. We weren't going to doubt each other. We weren't going to point fingers. And we were going to find a way to be five and three. That was the only message we had. And again, I think our players did a great job of doing that. I'm really, really happy for them. They deserve tonight. Um, since I asked this last week, kind of the reverse, how does it feel being an offensive coordinator when you have more than 700 yards of offense? Yeah, well, I appreciate that because you did ask how it felt to, to not score any points, which was a kind of a hurtful question. So um, <laughs> it feels fine. It feels good. I'm, I'm happy. I am really happy for our players. They they deserve to have a night when things work. They deserve to, to get into a rhythm. We obviously haven't. We all know that. And the weather, the teams. and you know, There's a lot of really good defenses in this league. And there's a lot of really good teams in this league. Good offenses, too. And um, sometimes you don't play as well as you want, um, and it's based on poor play calling or whatever else we want to talk about. So the fact that they got to have a good night tonight, really, really happy for Leak. Uh, again, his story, you know, he, he was not at the top of the list in the running back room um, in the, as the season began. I mean, you guys all know that, or he would have been playing more. Because why? We have a lot of talent, and somebody had to be at the bottom. He continued to practice hard, and had the last three weeks has practiced so well to the point that yesterday in the meeting I complimented him and everybody clapped for him and said, you know, you're not getting your touches, but you're still working hard. You're still practicing hard. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what a team guy does. So I'm happy for all our players. I'm really proud of the way these guys handled it and our offensive line and complimenting them. But Leak is a great story and is continuing to keep pounding the rock and finding a way to get your shot. And he got it. So I'm, I'm really happy for him. In terms of uh, what was going on this week outside of the team, how, how was that for you? Were you able to completely shut everything off, or did you have to manage it well and, and, and remind kids not to just pay attention at Illinois? We didn't. All we talked about was sitting here today and getting to answer questions from you that talking about we had five wins, and that's all we talked about. Getting better every day, sticking together every day, Leaning on each other every day. That's all we talked about. And they did a great job. And did you get 734 then? No, I just looked up. That's what time it was. There's a clock right now. It's 743, Don. So I would have said that. <laughs> <laughs> to your right. 
How was Ty Johnson feeling? I think he had a calf strain. And how good was it, I guess, that McFarlane and, and Lee kind of filled in in that gap that he left? Yeah, I, I don't know. How he, you know, he was certainly, uh, he, it was kind of bothering. He mentioned to me, and then, um, you know, he just felt like he couldn't go anymore. So we, we, we sent him in. He started getting treatment right away. Um, so I did not, I've not seen him yet. I'll see him here before we leave. But, um, you know, he was, he was moving around. It was just, he just wasn't comfortable. And obviously, again, we're very fortunate to have the backs we have to continue to have good players around. But obviously, you know, I'm hopeful he's okay. We were trying to make sure we didn't, you know, didn't re-injure it or didn't make it any worse. Coach uh, Watson with another um, targeting, I guess, um, I, I don't know whether it can be helped, but that's got to be, uh, I, I know you're not maybe looking ahead, but got a big game next week and you won't have him for the first half. No, I think it happened in the first half, I believe, so I think we'll have him. Uh, so, somebody smarter to know the rules, but I think he'll be able to play next week. So, uh, but, I, but it is an, it's an, it's an issue, we got to watch it. Um, I didn't see it, and obviously they reviewed it, so it was a good call, but um, you know, the, the last one was kind of a, a incidental, I mean, the by rule, but so we'll, we'll watch it. He was excited to play today, and then he plays very hard, and we'll have to continue to work on it. He still had some penalties today that we don't want to have, but we'll keep working on it. But he plays very hard. I know he's excited about the game, so I'm disappointed it happened to him. One of the players that popped off the field was a young man named Gote on special teams. He came out and really hit. I'd like you to comment on that, and then how well the defensive backs played the ball in the air today. You know, obviously he, he did play well today on special teams, and with with the rule the rule that's in place now, with the he can play a four game, keep your red shirt. We're trying our best to manage that rule and do what's best for our players and their futures. Um, so he has played in some games and not in some games. We're kind of doing this. So today was a game that he was excited. He knew he was going to be in on it. And I thought he took advantage of it and played very, very well. And, um, so I'm happy for him that he, you know, he does. We've got a lot of guys who can run. We have a lot of guys who can play well. And um, it's good to get those guys, you know, get them out there and let them play a little bit. So happy for him. Um, as far as the DBs, the DBs did play the ball in the air well. I thought we had a couple good knockdowns and, um, you know, made some plays. And they're, they're, they're playing at a high level right now. Happy for them. Matt, the first two touchdowns, there were terrific blocks on both of them. I mean, Ty opened up the last 30 yards on, on Leak's run, right. and then and then Jay Sean Jones hit on, on uh, Jarvis's play. How, how much does that help a team, a fire up a team, when guys make those kind of plays? Those sort of, it doesn't appear in the box score, but it obviously pretty important. Right, when you look at, talk about Ty, I mean, he's on our punt team. He's Obviously, kickoff return, he gets the ball, but he plays on special teams. He's out there blocking. That was a huge, you know, great effort play by him. So you'd have a senior who's one of four players in the history of the school to have 4,000 yards, and he's out there blocking you know, to get it done. And obviously, Jarvis's pass, that was, you know, I think it was third, I think it was third down. And obviously, we ran a crossing around and, and, and made a play, and then obviously, we popped it for more yards. You guys continue to block. And really, I would say those are the two examples you pointed out. That the whole point of the story is our guys have checked their egos and they just want to win. And they're playing together and they're playing for each other. And if they get the ball, everybody wants the ball. Right? Every wide out, you know, obviously as I mentioned, we've, we got a couple of young guys some balls today. Everybody wants the ball. Everybody's parents want them to get the ball more. Everybody's girlfriend's dad wants them to get the ball more. There's only one ball. And we thank goodness we'll be at 69 place today. So, but. I think as you look at our football team, they just want to win. If you, you know, you don't get to go in there because it's a special place, but the locker room, we're in there singing that song. Those guys are excited. They've been through it. They, they, you know, we had a tough one last week, and they, they found a way to win a football game. We played good on offense, good on defense, good on special teams. There's a lot on offense that I know that I'll watch in the morning and won't like. There's a bunch on defense that they won't like, but we're sitting here five and three with a bunch of kids that are playing so hard for each other and caring about each other. And that's the, that's the story. That's what you guys should talk about, is how awesome our players are, how hard they're playing, how special they are. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.